about Utpanna Dasha, right? Today, today we talk about Utpanna Dasha. What does the word Utpanna mean? The word Utpanna means risen. Somebody has risen. That which has risen, you are ready to go. You are ready to go. You are ready to take off. You are risen. A child is born. The child is studying. He has not yet fully risen to take up the responsibility of life in the planet. This is Udaya. Udaya. The Lagna is called Udaya. That means to rise. Rise does not mean that you have risen. You basically awaken over here. So you awaken in the Lagna. After you wake up, then you go do some exercises, you do some yoga asanas, you do some breathing. Some of you go for walking, depending upon your Lagna. You do mixed things based upon your Lagna. After that, you take a bath and then many of you are doing prayers and mantras. You speak the mantras and prayers and all that in the house. And then you have your breakfast, right? Food, second house. After that, you are ready to leave. You are ready to go. You are ready to take off. You see this? Blast over here. You see the blast that is happening in the third house. The third house suddenly is empowering you to go do your thing. What you are born for. You have, you have woken up. You have had your bath. You have had your breakfast. Now go, go to school. Go do what you have to do. Go to work. Whatever you have to do, you go. So that is the stage in which you are. So the third house, therefore, is empowering you to go learn something. Similarly, if I see from the ninth house of Dharma, this is awakening to the Dharma. This is preparing for the Dharma. And this is doing the Dharma. So some action is being talked about in these two houses. In the third house and the eleventh house, some action is being talked about. Utpanna, risen, gone up, arise, you are born. You are born in Lagna, but the purpose is for which you will go and do something is the third house or the eleventh house. The reasons for which you are born is eleventh house. Why am I born is eleventh house. The desire for which you are born is 11th house. So 11th and 3rd are very similar. If you see from the Lagna, this is two houses to one direction and this is two houses to the reverse direction. So 11th house and 3rd house are very similar. They come under what is called similar argala, similar kind of intervention in your life. It's about producing something. It's about creating something. It's about going forward to do something. It is about taking action. It is, it is a very warrior kind of energy. You are ready. See, the word I have used over here is exactly from the meaning. You are ready, all set to take off. Now, from the point of view of the spiritual life, Maharshi Jalmini says that it is something which is mentioned or quoted. So that is why 11th house is said to be that which is quoted by the Rishi. So what is quoted by the Rishi? What is talked about by the Rishi? These are called the Purana Rishi. These are called the Veda. So when you are quoting a Veda, when you are quoting a Purana, so third house is that is why called the Upadesha house. So that is why third house is called Upadesha because of Utpanna. Because of Utpanna, the third house becomes an Upadesha. 
you are ready to do something because it has been quoted you can refer to the teacher the teacher is ninth from here this is the ninth house if you can see this is the guru who you are quoting my guru told me why because i heard it we are hearing in this house whom are we hearing we are hearing the guru in this house so these words these things these memories these concepts become very deeply ingrained in our head they are very very deeply ingrained in our head and there is some kind of an eclipse on the mind they have the power to grasp the mind and force the mind to go in a certain direction and that is why you see i have put this lunar eclipse images out here and that is indicative of the planet ketu so in the third house and the 11th house the energy of ketu becomes very very powerful third house and 11th house have some kind of a headless energy you become headless no the guru told me to do this i will do exactly that i will not apply logic because my logic is going to fail i will not apply my own uh, uh, discrimination because that is also going to fail you see the five tattvas are here that is that is in this is the bhuloka where we have the prithvi and this is jala this is agni this is vayu and here is akash so at this point we say the 11th house this is my throat chakra my throat chakra is over here in the 11th house see this is mooladhara chakra then this is swadhisthana chakra then this is manipura is in the 9th house in the 10th house i have the anahata of vishnu in the 11th house the rudra chakra what is the rudra chakra called it is called the vishuddhi the purity chakra Con continuous purification is happening in this chakra continuous abhisheka is happening in this chakra that is why we are doing rudra abhishek by doing rudra abhishek our vishuddhi chakra is becoming pure and all that is connected to the 11th house the throat out here the throat of rahu and ketu got cut rahu's throat was cut by the sudarshan chakra in the 11th house and so the head the face and the head those chakras are here the agnyakya chakra is here and finally the sahasrara is in the lagna like this you can see that these chakras are perfectly aligning to this concept of utpanna that has been taught the shadow of the infrared ketu ketu's color is infrared rahu is ultraviolet the visible spectrum is red orange yellow green blue indigo violet these are the seven colors of the vara grahas the weekday planets beyond red is ketu and beyond violet is rahu so we say if this is shani then shani and rahu are similar if red is ruled by mars we say kujavad ketu kujavad ketu shani vad rahu so rahu is like saturn ketu is like mars infra uh, infrared ketu ultraviolet saturn did you see the connection over here i want you to understand if saturn is bad rahu is ultra badi if mangal is violent ketu is ultra violent you use the word ultra or extreme for rahu and ketu okay 
with this information we are now going to examine what is going to happen when the moon comes over here because the moon over here acquires a color which is reddish orangish color and that reddish orangish color is coming from the infrared k2 you do not see this color in the horoscope all you see is a planet written out there but you need to understand that the when the moon is in the third house or it is in the 11th house it gets such a color in which this moon can become very violent moon very angry moon very fighting moon when you touch the body of these people it can feel very hot their body feels very hot and then you check the blood pressure it is normal blood pressure it is sometimes low bp very peculiar situation the blood pressure can be normal or low bp but the temperature of the body is very very high so there is a very peculiar connection thing happening out here that is what we called an eclipse what is an eclipse something we don't understand something where the logic is not working somebody with let us say the body is feeling hot that means you are supposed to have high blood pressure it is not so check their body like that you have to understand this ketu so in all these charts you have to remember that ketu becomes very critical in the horoscope this is something we didn't discuss yesterday because yesterday i was opening the concept of special types of vimshottri dasha i was not sure how much you people are open to the idea of vimshottri dasha taking different forms many of you may say what is happening out here i just learned the calculation of the simple vimshottri dasha and now this man is coming up with all kinds of new concepts well these are intermediate or advanced level concepts and they are really not easy for beginners to understand but if you stay with me when you reach that place your memory will come back and help you because what i am speaking is expected to go inside and wait over there when you are ready this knowledge will open like the beautiful lotus that opens when the sun rises so now let us look at the ketu let us look at this chart this is the chart of that famous ysl you would have heard of ysl he was a designer huh? he was a top designer absolutely top designer i saint laura so ysl is what we call him and many of you know of him you can see the lagna has having sasa mahapurusha yoga and we can say that whenever there is this mahapurusha yoga you the planet that you need to look at is venus now that is again very advanced kind of knowledge now let us look at where is the moon in this chart moon here it says is in the 11th house look at the 11th house it is having the moon this moon has to be examined that this is not normal this is an infra red moon keep that in mind so to understand how ketu is influencing the mind here remember ketu has no aspect but there is rashi drishti also but sometimes there is no rashi drishti here ketu is having rashi drishti on chandra so therefore the color color of ketu will be very strong on the moon ketu will have a very profound influence on chandra ketu will grab the moon and will force him to become geruva infrared in color geruva vastra he will put on him now suddenly this person who is in france has this saffron color dominating his head he doesn't understand what is this 
he absolutely doesn't understand what this is. So let us look, Ketu is in the sign Gemini. So the Gemini becomes very important Rashi for him. Suddenly Gemini is very important. Suddenly Gemini is leading his life. So we say that although he is born in a Saturnine Sasha Mahapurush, as far as his mind is concerned, as far as the mind, the moon is the mind is concerned, Ketu is dominating it and is giving it a mercurial color. Mercurial color. Because of this, what do you mean by mercurial color? That means the energy of mercury or whatever mercury is telling over here is going to dominate his life. This mercury is going to start dominating. And what do we see out here? Four planets are conjoined. Means this is like a sadhu. He was a very sensitive man, very delicate man. And uh, absolutely brilliant designer look at mercury very very carefully mercury is in 25 degrees 42 minutes in ashtalesha shukra is in 25 degrees 30 minutes these two planets are in either you can call it war or you can call it love because these two planets are grabbing each other when two planets are grabbing each other, then they are either in love with each other or they are in a wrestling match. Right? So we don't know that. We don't know whether these two planets are doing wrestling or they are grabbing each other. In Karkarashi, it doesn't look like wrestling. It is more like grabbing. Mangal is also debilitated. Surya is there. Whatever. The dominant influence on this Mercury is now that of Shukra. So we can say that this Ketu is in Gemini in aspecting, but Ketu is headless. So from where will he get the head? He gets the head from the Rashi he will occupy. So the Lord of the Rashi becomes very important. Here the Lord of the Rashi is Mercury. It is in the sixth house. It is conjoined MKS. Marana Karaka Shukra. So basically, this Ketu, who is totally controlling his mind, his mind is fully controlled by this Ketu, is telling him, Do not marry. Do not marry. This is Marana for you. Do not marry. And instead, you can convert this whole Shukra energy into your work. Mercury is work. So he totally focuses his Shukra energy into, uh, into his work, this Mercury energy into his Shukra related work. And he goes into what is called a battle. There is a battle in your head. In your head, there is a battle. This battle is for fashion, clothes, and it is in Ashlesha Nakshatra. This battle is happening in Ashlesha Nakshatra. So therefore, this battle is going to burn both of them. Surya will ultimately burn both of them. Ultimately, you can see Surya is burning them. So he makes this brand called YSL. And this brand becomes very, very famous. Very, very successful. Because don't forget, Eclipse energy is a very powerful energy. It's a very powerful energy, this energy of Ketu. If you can harness this energy, properly you can achieve great things otherwise it will be wasted in rubbish okay so remember that in all these charts you must observe ketu very carefully and here we saw how the dispositor of ketu mercury is conjoining shukra and is giving him this powerful yoga of being a designer designer is mercury of shukra garments so he started this thing. He produced clothes. You see the word produced over here. They need to produce this. The, his name that, that he will rise. It is arisen. The YSL, that brand will rise. And, and like a flag, it will flutter in the sky. And everybody will run for it. People will go mad when they see the design. 
they will say wow and they will run another point we need to understand about utpanna nakshatra whenever the moon is in the 11th house it is utpanna tara what is utpanna tara it is the fifth star what is the fifth star it is a problematic star it is a star which is going to have a lot of trouble lot of problems lot of uh, uh, vipat what we call vipat troubles how do we know that look at the lordships of the nakshatras here you can see the moon is in uttara ashada nakshatra uttara ashada nakshatra is uh, ruled by sun if i am right sun okay and let us now count the fifth star from that uh, uh sun is here this is 21 22 23 24 nakshatra number 25 is purva bhadra nakshatra ruled by jupiter prima facie surya and jupiter are friends prima facie surya and guru are friends is it not so why are we expecting why are we expecting to have problems where will the problems come from you see destiny has gone over here your destiny has gone away over here so you don't understand life who am i what am i what am i living for i mean you are very lost in the world you are lost you are running around looking for an anchor to anchor you somebody to hold you that's typically ketu huh? ketu is like a kite flying in the sky without anybody holding on to the thread if nobody is holding on to the thread the kite is just flying and flying in the sky aimlessly he doesn't know where to go he doesn't know why he is flying there so whose joy who who is holding on to him this like, you see keep that in mind so from the janma nakshatra we get an idea of who is holding on to him here surya is the lord of janma nakshatra and surya is the lord of seven so his relationship becomes very important and his relationship was with a man called varj or varj varj or varj something like that is his name you please uh, find out about his relationships ha huh? he had only one relationship one major relationship and partnership and all that stuff and after this man came into his life he was able to do everything and achieve everything in his life but as i said there is an inherent conflict in the vipattara how because the nature of ketu is to let go give up after some time you will let go and when you let go you don't want to be here anymore because this this body this mind and body conflict that is there you see the body is always with the janma tara that is the body and the kala tara is the mind so you see the mind and body conflict is there mind and body conflict is there and the mind and body conflict which is shown by the placement of the moon when the moon is placed in in 2 6 8 or 12 in the 2 6 8 or 12 or in the 3 and 11 there is a mind body conflict and that conflict of the mind and body is very predominant and is called rahu ketu did you understand that why what is the problem why are these special dashas required they are required to understand as to where the mind is going because this is the body where the body is going so where is the mind going this is the mind okay now we come to the second chart that i have for you 
this is a prime minister of india it is a very interesting case of a prime minister again what is the lagna the lagna is aries where is the moon the moon is in aquarius in 11th house you see that and it is conjoined the 11th lord rahu it is conjoined the 11th lord rahu and we know that this is also the house of the guru upadesha guru's words so very interesting and what rashi is this this is aquarius which is the rashi of kali and what fruits are associated with kali lemon so this man was a farmer is a farmer this man would go to a great jyotishi in karnataka a very great jyotishi and a great not just a jyotishi he was a great guru a great sadhu and he will go to him and pray to him that please bless me and he whenever he goes to him he had told him the guru had told him you must come to me with lemon you must come to me with lemon so he will in his two hands he will hold two lemons and stand over there two lemons in two hands see offering to kali kumbha rashi has to make the offering to kali has to make that lemon offering to kali ha huh? moon in kumbha you better make lemon offering to kali so the lemon is there in his hand and is standing over there and the guru after some time tells him okay go sometimes he blesses sometimes he says things and all that and once he asked will you do you think i will ever become prime minister the guru looked at him and said yes for a very short while and that much so then he has to leave the two lemon over there in the doorstep and then go away and true to the words of the guru you see the blessing of the two lemons why offering lemon to kali is so important the lemon the lemon ha yeah, nimbu de de karke prime minister ban gaye so he offered lemon and he became prime minister by the grace of the guru but he is not like that he is also born in sashan yoga but this is 10th house mahapurusha yoga but that is not the case out we what i am trying to point out is i want you to understand the 11th house importance he was the 11th prime minister is that just a coincidence 11th prime minister moon in 11th house what is this ketu trying to say look at ketu what is ketu trying to say ketu is in 5th house see in the 5th house ketu is in leo who is the lord of this sign sun what does sun indicate political power so ketu is telling him political power will i become prime minister will i become prime minister will i become prime minister nag 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 will i become prime minister see ketu is nagging nagging the guru finally says guru okay become prime minister and the lagna lord mars is in the fifth house as you can see over here again will i become prime minister see fifth house power ninth lord guru where is the guru will i become prime minister see fifth house everything is in fifth house will i become prime minister is the one question and he kept on giving lemon kept on giving lemon and he became prime minister and then a very peculiar situation when bajpai government fell because of one vote in the year 1996 or something like that yeah it was 95 96 i remember i was in government those days i was in government those days and uh, 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 deva goda ji became our prime minister and he was prime minister from 1st june 1996 to 21st april 1997 as you know he did not even complete 11 months and we used to call him when we used to all call him the humble farmer so that is how he always he always started speaking in parliament like that i am humble farmer and then he will start off okay so when did he become the prime minister in jupiter dasha saturn antar dasha many of you can easily say saturn is in 10th house right but what dasha am i using what dasha am i using saturn lemon ha huh? saturn is lemon lemon to kali what dasha am i using 
I am using Utpanna Dashas. Okay. Very interesting you observe. Correctly in Jupiter Dasha, Shami Antar Dasha, he became. But does he have the yoga for that? I mean, I, I, I need really powerful yogas of the Atma Karaka and things like that. I mean, you can check all that if you want. Those big yogas are all lacking. Though big yogas are all lacking, but as you said, you keep giving this. You see, remedies are working out here. You can see he's a perfect case of how remedies worked and he became the prime minister. Exactly. Jupiter Dasha, Saturn Antar Dasha, he became prime minister, and Jupiter Dasha, Mercury Antar Dasha, he, government was toppled at 11 months. He did not even spend one whole year. Devagoda. I mean, it is debatable. Was he the shortest serving prime minister or was Gujral chief? That is very debatable. What is the conflict over here? The con see, always we have to look at the conflict because Ketu is involved, it's a Utpanna Dasha. Where is the conflict in the head? The conflict is between Jupiter and Venus. There is a conflict between two mighty gurus, and it is very interesting. His job was to look after all these multiple parties who had formed this government. The government was formed by a I think what 10, 10 political parties or something like that had come together under that VP Singh to form this. And that VP Singh was, was it VP Singh? No, no, no. Anyway, no, it was not VP Singh. VP Singh came in the 80s. This is that Gouda who came after Vajpayee. Anyway, so did you understand the conflict? His job was to keep Jupiter and Venus in harmony, which is impossible, right? It is impossible to keep Jupiter and Venus in harmony. They always are contradicting each other. Right hand and left hand. Now we come to our next chart. That of F.D. Roosevelt. Here again we have Leo Lagna. Moon is in the 11th house. But this moon is in the 11th house in Gemini. And that moon is in Ardhra Nakshatra. So his body, his body is shown by Ardhra, right? And his mind is in Magha. Very interesting, huh? Body is in Ardhra, mind is in Magha. You can see that, right? Is it not? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is nakshatra number six, and this is nakshatra number 10. You can count Rahu and Ketu. Now, is it possible for Rahu and Ketu to come together? Is it possible? Simple question. Simple question. Is it possible for Rahu and Ketu to even shake hands? Just shake your hands. No, they cannot shake hands. So that means there is a danger over here. What is the danger? The, either the body will break or the mind will break. How is the mind? The mind is very strong. The mind is extremely powerful. It is sitting with Mars over there. Mars is strong. So it, this is Rudra Yoga. It is a Shashi Mangala Yoga. So it is powerful mind. Fighting mind. The mind is capable of fighting and taking up challenges. It's a strong mind. Who is the lord of the mind? Mercury is the lord of the mind. See that? Gemini, lord of moon. Where is he? He is in Kendra. Oof, thank God. So the mind is going to be strong. What about body? Body lagna? Where is the lagna lord? Sixth house. So the body will break. You see that? The body breaks and he becomes lame. He is confined to a wheelchair. You see that? Did you understand how I utilize this information to check? You need to check whether both are strong. If both are in Kendra, they will survive. I don't care whether they are Marana Karaka or whatever. 
they need to be in Kendra to be strong. Kendra, they will survive because of the energy of Vishnu. Kendra Bhava, Vishnu Bhava. Vishnu Bhava will survive. Okay. Now, come to the next part. Where is Ketu in the horoscope? Ketu is in 10th house. What is the meaning of Ketu in 10th house? It's in Taurus. Who is the Lord of this sign? Venus. But forget this Lord. Venus is in MKS. I mean, I'm not talking about his girlfriends. The mistake. Mistake. You made a mistake, President. You six house is what? Servant. So basically, he ended up having an affair with his wife's secretary. It's okay. It's human, right? He, I mean, he. Okay, I'm not giving any explanation. It just happened. It's a fact. So that is the Ketu's dispositor. Venus has gone to sixth house in Marana Karakastana. So he went through that turmoil in his life. And uh, you can see that Ketu is in the 10th house in Digbala. Digbala Ketu is a very powerful Ketu. Extremely powerful Ketu. You cannot find him. He is Ananta Naga. You know what's Ananta Naga? I mean, it's impossible to fight Anantanaga. He'll bite you and you will die. When he bites, you stay bitten. There's no way you can get out of it. Whenever we think of FDR, what is the one weapon that he de was developed by him? Who developed the atom bomb? Who developed the nuclear bomb? Who was the first president to achieve atom bomb? It was FDR. But he didn't use it. It was ready and then he died of heart attack and he left direction, orders, very clear orders that they have to be used by so and so date. So his successor had no option but to use it. Maybe he had option. I, I'm not good in politics. Check it out. So, so you see that Ketu in the 10th house? When Ketu is in the 10th house, the nuclear option is open. Keep that in mind. If Ketu is in 10th house, don't push the guy. He will use the nuclear option. Okay. <clears throat> so he, now here Ketu is in which sign? It's in Taurus. What is Taurus about? Wealth. So you are fighting a battle. What is the battle you are fighting? The fight against the Great Depression the great poverty you have to fight a battle against poverty so look at the rashi the rashi tells us about the deeper battle that you have to fight if ketu is in taurus you are fighting for money you are fighting for the creation of wealth you are fighting to create wealth food and jobs for people you, it is about taurus you are fighting for your venus well placed yeah, is the 10th lord and lagna lord see that Yoga, you're fighting for your country. If the same Ketu, let us say, is in Virgo, you're fighting for your land, you're fighting for your grain, you're fighting for your farm, or maybe some other thing related to the land over there. What happens if Ketu is in Sagittarius? You're fighting for God, you're fighting for religion, you're fighting for Dharma. You are fighting for that whatever. Ketu is fighting, right? It's headless, basically. And he fought the Great Depression. It is his great fight that converted America from poverty and destitute situation to an extremely wealthy and supremely powerful nation. His years in, is what changed the destiny of one man who changed the destiny of America, FDR. Before FDR, America was not the number one nation in the world. After FDR, America became number one. That is the difference. So FDR is the turning point. Keep that in mind. And again, 
the turning point comes from an utpanna a reason what has a reason what has a reason in this horoscope ananta naga has a reason in this horoscope ananta naga has woken up in this horoscope oh my god he is going to bite if you fight him you can see the details over here he became president in rahu dasha jupiter antar dasha till his death in rahu dasha moon antar dasha i mean moon ultimately killed him you can see all that why the moon kills him moon is with mangal rudra yoga so it was a heart attack moon with mars rudra yoga in rahu dasha moon antar dasha when did he come to power who is power position authority comes from the fifth house who is the fifth lord it's jupiter where is it ninth house so rahu dasha jupiter antar dasha he came to power easy till now you are struggling with vimshottri dasha you apply the right vimshottri dasha i mean it's a no brainer it's a no brainer rahu dasha jupiter are you sure rahu dasha jupiter antar dasha he will come to power look at the d10 chart jupiter is lagna and 10th lord in the 10th house of course he will come to power in rahu dasha jupiter antar dasha why don't you use some other dasha i don't need to this works wonderfully and what about retirement what about retirement when will his work end retirement is seen in the 8th house retire or die right you have the two options moon is in the 8th house see 8th house moon what is the 8th house moon 8th house is retirement right when either you are kicked out you lose power you retire you go away and here moon is in the 8th house hey he actually died that is why you can't be president after you die come on that's easy now uh now we uh, come to the second part of utpanna dashas this has to do with moon in the third house which is far more dangerous because you can see the natural karaka for the 11th house is jupiter so when the moon is in the 11th house there is jupiter there the energy of jupiter is there as the karaka to help you but when is in the moon is in the third house the karaka of that house is mars so when the moon is in the third house you must you need to be far more careful because here the karaka is mars and here we are talking of ketu taking over the reins so do you see the fundamental conflict happening out here of ketu and mars so in any case it is a utpan and as we have discussed previously when the moon is in third house we have to look at the house where ketu is placed we have to understand the planet ketu here ketu is in third house so this has to do with dharma or religion right so look at this third house ketu and understand the mind of this man the mind the moon is with ketu oh my god what a powerful eclipse of the moon what a powerful eclipse of the mind is happening because of this this is not an ordinary ketu it's a utpanna it's a utpanna state and in the utpanna state this eclipse by ketu is total ketu has conjoined the moon and on top of that jupiter is in mks and who is jupiter over here jupiter is the lord of this sign he is the lord of sagittarius so this whole combination is an extremely dangerous violent eruptive combination think about it. ketu is exalted and what is he fighting for dharma right or he is fighting for religion so how are you fighting for religion how is this man 
fighting for religion. He doesn't understand religion anyway. It is not as if he's a very religious man or he goes to church or does something like that. You see, this is called an eclipse. This is called terror because you don't understand religion because the planet for religion, which is Jupiter, is in Marana Karaka, means you don't understand religion. You don't understand dharma. Since you don't understand dharma, the anger takes over and, and you are simply attacking other religion. So who are you attacking over here? What is the big battle about? You see, you are attacking the Jews. You have to destroy the Jews. The Jews are horrible. So you are finding a religion and just attacking them. You see the madness. It is madness. It is insanity. And, and this is a war. You see the big, this whole combination in the mind, the war, it's a war. It's a world war. The battle is in the mind. Ketu in the third house is very, very explosive. This is the chart of Adolf Hitler, as you can see. Raj Yoga. Is there a Raj Yoga in this horoscope? Everybody can see that it is Saturn in Cancer. What is the dictum? If Saturn is in Cancer in Lagna or the 10th house, it is a Raj Yoga Suomoto. That means Saturn in Karkarashi it gives Raj Yoga. Why is that so? Why does Saturn in Cancer give Raj Yoga? You see, Saturn has a Devata. He has called a Devata. The name of his Devata is Varun. And Cancer, Aditya is called Varun. Is that is that a match? So the Devata for Saturn is Varuna and Cancer Devata is Varuna. So therefore, when Saturn is in Cancer, we say you are having a very powerful blessing of a Devata called Varun Devata. He is also the god of the oceans. He is like a very, very powerful god. He is also the god of the night. And he has got Pasha. Pasha is the news. And with that news, he, he, he basically wants to put a collar around your neck and drag you back to rebirth. So this Saturn is going to give him Raj Yoga. Now, now how do we time it? We use Utpanna Dashas. You see that? Utpanna Dashas. When is Saturn Dasha coming? Saturn Dasha starts in 1921. And you can see we are off by a few months. So in 1921, in Jupiter Dasha, Rahu Antar Dasha. Sorry. What was that? In 1921, in Jupiter Dasha, Rahu Antar Dasha. That means here you can see this is called Dasha Chidra. Saturn, even before the Dasha started, he became chairman of the party of NSDAP. And then Saturn started. Saturn started in December of 1921 and the Raj Yoga started. And he became invincible. Why is he invincible? Because this Devata has empowered him. Varuna has empowered him. So firstly, what do you need to do? You need to go to jail. Saturn's put Drishti on 12th house. See, 12th house is putting Drishti. So that is also jail. 12th house is jail. Huh? You know that, no? Saturn puts Drishti on 12th house, which is jail. What do you do over there? This is Mercury's house, so you write a book. See, all that happened. When was that in Saturn Dasha, Saturn Antar Dasha? 
Then comes Mercury Antardasha. He was released on 20th of December. When did Mercury Antardasha start? 20 December. Wow, look at the timing. Look at the timing. This is bullseye. As if Adolf Hitler knew Jyotish and, and, and that it was in collusion with everybody. Then finally he goes on, does his nasty politics, beat everybody, kill everybody. And then in Saturn Dasha, Moon Antar Dasha, he becomes chancellor and dictator. In which Antar Dasha he gets dictator powers? In Moon Antar Dasha. Now normally, normally what will you say? Saturn is in Karkarashi, Moon is the lord of Karkarashi, so he is getting his complete Raj Yoga, the complete Raj Yoga, but why dictator? Dictator is not Moon, not Chandra. Chandra is a socialist planet. You are equal, I am equal, we will all live equally, we are all children of the same mother, we are equal, huh? that, is, that is Chandra. But this is not Chandra. Do you see what I'm trying to show you? This is not Chandra. This is Ketu flavored Chandra. This is not water. This is not water. This is water with some acidic juice in it. Powerful acidic lime juice. Lemon, lemon, nimubat. Remember what I told you. Moon in third house and eleventh house. Drink lemon. Stay calm. Lime juice you have to drink. You want to take tea, put a slice of lemon in the tea and drink it. You want to take coffee, put a slice of lemon in it and drink it. Put a slice of orange, citrus. Citrus is what will save you. If only somebody could have given Nimbo Pane to Hitler, he would have saved the world. Then finally, 1934 June. In Saturn Dasha, Mars Antar Dasha, oh my God, the devil. Night of the long knives, see that? He murdered so many people. It is murder, it is plain murder. How is it murder? Shani is aspecting Mangal, Mangal aspecting Shani. You kill me, I kill both. It is, it is, it's a killing cycle. It's a killing cycle. It is very interesting if you see, moon is in the third house, in which nakshatra? Careful, huh? whenever you are looking at the moon, you have to see two things, Janma nakshatra and the Utpanna nakshatra or Adhana nakshatra or Sheva nakshatra, because that is the Kal. Kal nakshatra and the Janma nakshatra are different. Kal is the destiny, is the time. Time is called Kaal and Dasha has no meaning if it cannot talk about time. What is Dasha? Dasha has two factors in it. One is your state and the second is time. So you are doing a Dasha calculation from the moon blindly and you are expecting that it will also tell me the time of the person. It will not. That is why we need to find out from where this time is running. Time is running from some other nakshatra. His Janma nakshatra is nakshatra number 20. This is his Janma. This is his body. And this, so it will tell us why did he come? Why was Hitler born? At least one of the factors I can know from his Janma Nakshatra. Because I know that this moon is not moon. It is a Ketu flavored moon. And what kind of a Ketu? Oh my God, it's a very dangerous Ketu in the third house. With Jupiter and moon. Marana Karaka Jupiter and moon. It's a very dangerous one. So why did he come? What is the Nakshatra? It is Purvashada Nakshatra. Now, those of you who don't know about Nakshatras, Guruji, it is a Venus nakshatra, it is beautiful nakshatra. You guys are pathetic here. Venus nakshatras are the worst nakshatras in the zodiac. The Gandanta nakshatras are not so bad. 
look which are the gandan ashwini gandanta revati gandanta you get excited about that oh it is in revati gandanta he will get complete knowledge and can get moksha what's bad about that ashwini gandanta he will have supreme knowledge to save the body from dying ashwini kumara the healers of the zodiac yes that is bad i am not denying that those gandanta nakshatras are also having evil but nothing compared to shukras nakshatras look at the nakshatras bharani nakshatra who is the god of bharani yama yama is the god of bharani and you know who is yama the god of death okay. now we come to purva shadha nakshatra which is in sagittarius what is this nakshatra it is called kali yuga vinasha nakshatra the nakshatra in which kali yuga will come to an end is purva shadha nakshatra what is the speciality of this nakshatra this is the nakshatra in which pralaya will happen this is called pralaya nakshatra but we need ample amount of negative factors to cause the waves of tsunami to rise to flood the earth and destroy the lives of people so many beings will die so how do we see that so i need this purva shada you see purva shada see that nakshatra number 20 jupiter oh jupiter is also in purva shada nakshatra number 20 and ketu he is also in purva shada nakshatra number 20 and is almost exactly exalted almost exactly exalted what degree is ketu exalted in? do you see why did hitler come he came to remind us that pralaya will come one day and he will have the face of adolf hitler that pralaya will come and he will have the face of adolf hitler because these are the planets involved and these planets are in such a situation that jupiter who is the protector is dying marana will fail the guru will the great guru is failing if the great jupiter will fail ketu will just wipe everybody up so you learn something important today now this is the last chart for the night this is pisces lagna pisces lagna has a graha dosha what is the graha dosha of pisces so dosha is the sun the sun is the graha dosha of pisces that means the sun will torture you the sun will punish you the sun will test you how do we understand this why does pisces have graha dosha of the sun very simple go to a shore where there are fish abound and look at a fish that jumps out of the water and falls on the land when the light when the sunlight will directly fall on the skin of the fish the skin will dry up the skin of the fish will dry up and if the skin of the fish will dry up the fish will die how does the fish die why does the fish die when it is out of water does it not get oxygen it gets oxygen but if the skin will dry up it will die the skin has to be wet for it to survive very interesting and who dries up the skin the sun dries up the skin or the air also can dry up the skin the air can also dry up the skin what causes the wind to move the sun which among the two is more dangerous the sun it dries up quickly it will die immediately so therefore for pisces lagna sun is a very dangerous planet you have to always check whether surya is burning this lagna or shani the wind is burning the lagna sometimes it is rahu the wind so always 
keep your skin well oiled for normal human beings we are not fishes now look at this this is pisces lagna with the sun in the fourth house huh? in big shunya where is ketu in this horoscope it is in the 11th house what is the 11th house it is the house of the gurus and what gurus are this oh it is with saturn these are tapasvi gurus what kind of them they are they are this kali gurus kali tapasya remember i told you kali tapasya so i can say that what is the influence of this ketu in this lady's life from the age of four years when she was five years old she was taught how to make a shivalinga out of mud five years of age she was taught how to make a shivalinga out of mud by whom by sadhus of the sharada mat so they taught her they took her to the banks of the ganga in the banks of the ganga she made shivalinga and she was taught how to worship that shivalinga five years of age is that planned is that not destiny we'll come to that how is that destiny we'll come to that we'll come to dasha she was born in rohini nakshatra so the janma is rohini this is the body taste what you like what you don't like is here but not time time doesn't follow that time comes from the kala nakshatra which is pushya the lord of this nakshatra is brihaspati and the vimshotri lord is saturn so therefore saturn is very very important and what was the dasha at her birth you can see saturn dasha i was just talking to you about saturn and ketu and the sharada mat and the ladies of the sharada mat the sanyasinis the prabrajikas of the sharada mat the gurumas they taught her this the kalis they are kali if there is a form of kali that you wish to see in this planet go to the sharada mat that is where you will see kali if there is a blessing that you want from kali take the blessing from them that is the blessing of kali now this saturn dasha is still 9 years of age you see that how interesting so it was in this saturn dasha that the shiva puja she learned 11th house i told you the words of the guru i wanted you to learn this you see that it works perfectly you apply the normal vimshottari dasha moon dasha how do you mangal dasha it was mangal dasha you will argue it is ninth lord in third house so she learned shiva worship i mean stuff this is easy okay fine let us come to an incident of fire big shunya surya is in fourth house we talked about it there is a danger of fire the body of the fish will be burnt by the fire it is a very very dangerous position for pisces natural surya doshas are that near death fire accident she had in sun dasha look at the timing surya dasha is from 2015 to 2021 look at the timing do you see that from 2015 to 2021 is surya dasha and bull sign it works perfectly correctly in this she had the fire accident in 2018 in 2018 she had the fire accident what was the dasha over here if you see the normal vimshottari dasha it was shani dasha now you will have to start stretching jyoti she would start doing with why what is the need to do stretching to say saturn is in 11th house it is conjunct ketu ketu is a fiery planet saturn ketu yoga is a bad yoga see you start all that stuff why what is the need for that what is the need for torturing you with rubbish just take the normal rules what have been taught 
calculate the utpanna dasha the software will do it automatically for you and there you go perfect with this i end the discussion today see you soon thank you very much for joining